sports yeah. is rooted in superstition. That is, that is true. And it's something that doesn't make sense at all. Why would wearing a certain shirt make this team of people I don't know win? Why would saying certain things make maybe a pitch go better? It doesn't really make sense, and yet it's still there. We're going to talk about why. Why are we superstitious mm -hmm. uh, as human beings? I'm just using sports as an analogy because it's very, very much steeped in superstition. There's a lot of people who, you know, maybe if I don't wear this jersey, they'll lose. Maybe yeah. if I do wear this other jersey, they'll lose. You yeah. just want to help your group win in whatever way you can. Ultimately, there's very little, if nothing, you can do practically that would help, um, you know, a player you don't even know achieve what you want him to achieve. So we have different ways of using our own brains poorly uh, to make this happen. Do you have any superstitions? Uh, I used to have tons when I played. Um, so I played football at a pretty high level. My football, which is soccer, yeah. Um, and I used, it's, the only, it's the only way I can say soccer. <laughs> soccer ball. Uh, Stop it. <laughs> okay, please go ahead and don't say don't say that again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the only it's it. I don't believe that superstition is a, a real thing. I believe in certain weird things. Like I believe karma is a thing, um, and I believe that there is sometimes a, a higher power that has an influence. But superstition is all rooted in preparation. That is mm -hmm. always what I've told myself. Um, you're always looking to prepare yourself. Whether you're physically prepared, that can easily be counteracted if you're not mentally prepared. And how do you mentally prepare? By doing all these things that you're telling yourself have to be done. I'm not, I, I don't believe in my head that if I don't wear my ankle sock, which is a small sock that you can't see, on my left foot, and mm -hmm. I had my, my normal sportswear sock underneath my game sock, so... Um, I used to have one sock, which was obviously the smaller ankle sock that only came up there, and the other one was a larger one. I don't think that if I didn't wear them, it would affect anything about the mechanics of my body. I don't think it would affect any outcome of the game. But my mind would immediately be thinking, ah, there's a problem right here. Like, my, I'm itching here. Maybe I don't have my right sock on. Mm -hmm. So it's all about preparation. Now, athletes in general are always trying to think about how they can prepare for a game. Um, Baseball is a very prominent sport. I know the Indians and the Cubs is a very popular series at the moment as we are into the World Series and baseball players are notorious for their rituals. I don't believe there's any substance other than the fact that they're trying to prepare mentally. That's yeah. the sole purpose. So you think they're kind of placating themselves yes, with maybe exactly. a placebo that you know logically does not work but it helps them get to the right headspace at least yes, where it will exactly. work. Let's say you're a fan though and you are watching your favorite team mm -hmm. and you think uh, if I wear I need to wear this shirt and I can't wash it or they'll lose. So you're wearing this filthy shirt um, because you believe it will help the team achieve their goals. The the players down there, they don't know what you're doing. They don't probably aren't even thinking of you at all or yes. any fan at all. Um, and it's just, it's, it's interesting though. What it is, it seems to be, is the mind trying to rationalize things the only way that it can. Mm -hmm. um, for one, this comes from um, a psychologist named Daniel Kahneman and he published a book called thinking fast and slow, and that there are two systems related to this that would be able to determine what you're doing. Um, the second one, which is the rational one, which is you would, you, you in your head know, oh, me not washing my socks or me wearing di two different socks won't really help these men that I don't even know who they, mm -hmm. they don't know us each, or we don't know each other at all. Um, but that is kind of the slower system. There's a faster, more guttural, more knee-jerk reaction, which is system one that he described. It's more maybe close to what Freud would call the id, which yeah. is just the, you know, I want it, I'm going to do it, it's fine, everything, I, I have to do it. It's, it's just fast and not really rational or logical, but it has its own uh, logic in a way. Um, so part of this is your brain trying to ca find a cause and effect uh, scenario in order to make sense of the world. So if I wear this shirt, the Cubs will win the game. Yeah. Right. So you're trying to in inject yourself at least psycholo psychologically in this way. Uh, there's also what it does is it begs you not to tempt fate. So you know maybe you hear if you don't if you show up with a clean shirt everyone will lose and you're like well you know I shouldn't tempt fate my I should fault. just do everything in, in my power not to be the one that ruins it for everyone yeah. you know and that may cause some people to get beat up for breaking the rules I don't know <laughs> I'm not a sport fan very much uh, and then there's there's 
all of this thrives on confirmation bias. Okay. So you may notice like, oh, when I wear my socks this way, they win, but you're not really paying attention to the times that didn't work. Yeah. You're just really remembering and really recounting the ways when it did. Yeah, absolutely. And that means proof, absolutely, at least to that side of the brain. Uh, it's you mentioned it the first part when you decided to when you went on and talked about it where it's uh, it's much easier for you to to kind of rationalize why your team loses mm -hmm. based on your own things that you're not doing right rather than maybe paying attention to the fact that your team might not just be good enough at well, that moment or they might not have done things right where you're like damn it it was my fault I never wore my specific shirt there's nothing to do with the <laughs> fact that LeBron James didn't turn up for a game seven hypothetical. I'm a big LeBron James fan. <laughs> Let's relax. But, I uh, know what this means. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like uh, <laughs> I think your mind tries to play tricks on itself by being like, "You should have done. You should have done this a little bit. You should have did this a little bit better." But I also think there's a lot to do with. I don't know if it was a point that was mentioned. It's uh, taking part. Like mm -hmm. you almost want we to be like part to of it. We like to feel like yeah. we're in some amount of control. And Especially uh, if you're I mean, a fan. The fact is, usually you're not. Yes. You're. If you're a fan, you like to consider yourself. If you won that game. The feeling that you have when you're wearing that you stinky shirt. You do feel shirt, ownership, like, right? Yes. Like when fans of a team, when they win, they're, they're psyched. There's yes. this level of pride and ownership of what has happened, and I think that's a big part of it. Yes. And I think that's a lot of how, you know, these stadiums and teams, they make so much money. No doubt. That's why, because they'll sell the, your lucky, your, they'll sell you a new shirt every time, which is then going to be your new lucky shirt, because this year, if the Cubs don't win it, those shirts are getting thrown out, and they're going back into, I'm going to, it's a new season, get myself a new uh, a new ritual start, that I'm going to get. My lucky shirt. Yep, I'm going to find out what works for the team, and I'm going to do it, I'm because <laughs> I am participating in this win. Yeah. Oh, uh, and your your faster your slower rational brain is not really it's not getting there fast enough. Like so we will like, cave. Hey, idiot! We will it's cave into to do the, with you. Yes. Stop spending your wife's money. That that's what I say, <laughs> to which I frequently get booed. Uh, boo! Boo! Shut up! <laughs> We're helping nachos. Something like that. Uh, yeah. So deep down, we know, we know, but it's you know it's fun. what if? It's fun to be part. It's yeah. Fun, you know. So it's it's our brain not being the smartest of brains, not being the brainiest brain. Um, yeah. So do you ultimately feel like I'm you still going to do in, it? Yeah, you're going to no, do it. That, that's that, like you just said everything that I have in my head. Like I'm like idiot. Still, what are you doing? But still, I like to be part of it. I like to have uh, indulge in the fun. And when I played it, I knew that even if we didn't win a game and I had every ritual taken care of. It wouldn't adjust my next ritual. It wouldn't be like, ah, I'm going to change this. No, it was like, that's it. Because uh, those 18 losses, I still won one game when I did it. So that's it validated. I'm going to keep doing it. Unless your your ritual is actively like breaking LeBron James' ankle, oh, it's probably yeah. going to have no effect on yes. the game. Uh, but you know what? If you're having fun, have fun. If you want to feel like you're part of it, do it. We want to feel like we have control in this chaotic world. And if it gives you that level of strength, I say have fun with it. Uh, audience, do you have any superstitions, sports or otherwise? Probably otherwise, knowing this audience. Uh, please let us know below in the comments. And please like and subscribe for much more.